Today, we've got a few stories from kids who find out some unfortunate news about their parents. Let's listen in. First up, I found out tonight my mom has been cheating on my dad. I've never been so heartbroken. My parents have been together almost no fights whatsoever since the year before I was born. I'm 22, so it's been a while. They've never been super romantic, but they've always seemed stable and happy together. A couple of years ago, my dad came clean that he'd had a gambling addiction and he was almost a hundred thousand pounds in debt. There were lots of fights, things were tense, but months passed. We figured it out, we all forgave him. Everything was almost like it used to be. My mom is an alcoholic. She doesn't like to admit it, but she is. When she gets drunk, she does nothing but badmouth my dad in the most horrible ways, and it breaks my heart. He works so hard and he's so lovely to me and my half-sister. He's her stepdad. And he loves us all so much. He'd do anything for us. My mom is great when she's sober, but when she's drunk, she's my least favorite person in the world. Anyway, tonight she was super drunk, no surprise. I walk past and catch a glimpse of her screen and think it looks oddly like nudes. She covers her screen and I walk away and catch a glimpse again when I walk past. I ask who she's texting. She plays dumb and gets mad at me, so I leave. I sit back down, shaking at this point, messaging my sister, trying to play it cool because my dad's in the room. I go back to the kitchen to get a drink, and there in full view are explicit photos of my mother, and texts back telling her she's sexy on WhatsApp. My dad doesn't have WhatsApp. I immediately ask her what that is, who she's texting, what's going on. Whether through denial or drunkenness, she says she doesn't know what I mean, keeps deflecting. She's talking to her therapist. It's nothing. Maybe she just went a little too far. I snatch her phone off her. Bad move, maybe. And she leaps across the table to try and grab it and almost falls on the floor. I get a little hysterical. I start crying, saying she knows what she's done and to stop playing dumb. She tells me not to tell my dad. I ask her what she expects me to do. I'm sobbing and he's going to notice. She tells me she can't believe I'm acting like this after everything she's done for me. I run out in hysterics and let it slip to my dad because how could I not? It's not like I can hide hysterical sobbing. He comes in, asks mum what's going on. Mum denies it all. Dad says she's too drunk and he'll talk to her when she's sober. He leaves and he's good at staying stoic, but I can tell he's upset. My mom is calling me an a-hole. She can't believe I've done this to her. How could I? She wants me to disappear. Tells me to F off. I tell her she knows what she did wrong. She keeps acting like it's my fault. She won't look at me except to glare at me. Every time they cross paths, they're dead silent, where they'd usually joke with each other. They've both gone to bed, and I'm dreading what will happen in the morning when she's sober. I feel so freaking guilty and upset. I'm so heartbroken. I didn't want to tell dad. I wanted to wait until mom was sober so we could have a conversation. But she kept doing it after I confronted her, and I didn't know what to do. How could she do this after everything? I know my dad did wrong, but he's worked so hard to fix it. I've been crying for hours now and I just don't know what to do. And here comes the update. To the people condemning my dad over the gambling, I don't want to hear it. He's fixed his mistakes and he was honest and he's a good man. Maybe I'm looking through rose-tinted glasses here, but this was two years ago and I've processed that betrayal and moved past it. I do not want to hear it. My parents slept in the same bed last night, somehow. I woke up a few hours ago and laid around for a few hours, kind of hoping mom would come in and apologize and explain stuff, but she didn't. I heard my parents arguing, but I don't know what was said. I got up to make breakfast and mom came down, acted like everything was normal. I was cold. She told me she hasn't done anything wrong and she doesn't know what I saw, but it wasn't that. But I know what I saw. She admitted it to me. She told me she went a bit too far and it made her happy. I don't think she's slept with anyone, I think it's just been texts or photos. Or I like to think so. She's trying to make me feel bad by saying she knows how it feels to be lied to when dad gambled and kept it a secret. That she's had a rough couple of years with the gambling and her mum, my nan, who I was close to as well, passing away. We've had the same issues. She said if she wanted to leave him, she'd have done so two years ago. I told her I don't believe her, but if she is doing this, I hope this shocks her into stopping. She tried to give me a hug, and I said, I don't want one after how she spoke to me last night. I feel like I'm being gaslit. I know what I saw. I saw the photos. I read a text or two, 
She won't let me look at her phone. I'm mentally ill, and it's hard to know if I'm imagining or overreacting sometimes, but I know what I saw. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Update 2 My mom's been hiding upstairs all day. Stuff is calm at the moment, so I'm going to take this time to go cheer up with some hobbies and not think about it. There's far too many comments for me to reply to them all, but to those of you being supportive, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means the world to me that everyone here has been so supportive. Thank you for every lovely comment and DM. You all have my love. I just wanted everyone to know I really appreciate it all, and I'm not ignoring anyone. <laughs> There's just a lot. Thank you all. And now, on to our next story. My father has been having a parallel life. My father and mom have been married for 25 years. They have been together for 29. The past few years haven't been easy for any of us in the family. I have struggled with depression for four years, and I've only now nearly recovered after one year of therapy. My mother and my father also have been going through depression for different reasons. My older brother is autistic. I told myself the reasons of my depression were my often absent friends, my chronic food-related illnesses, I've got celiac, my not-so-good-anymore grades, and I was in fact at least somewhat right. I tried to build my certainties on my family, which I saw was hurting, but I thought was strong on its foundation of love and trust. So did my mother. We tried to rebuild our relationship inside the family. Till Ong didn't read, I've been depressed, my mother has been depressed, my father's been depressed, my brother has been depressed, and is autistic. In September, I decided to start my university experience in another city of my country. So I transferred there. I might have been egotistic in doing so. I left my family alone because I felt like I couldn't take any more of the burden of that ill climate. From September to December, I literally lived the best time of my life, even in a disgraced period like this. For Christmas break, I decided to come back home and pass some nice family time. The climate was tense as always, but I managed to enjoy it enough for that little period of time. And that was until the 24th of December. All four of us are at the table with my grandmother, father's mother, to eat the Christmas Eve's lunch. My father uses some abusive language toward my mother, as he did too often to be forgivable for us to not act on it. My mother usually takes it silently, but this time she replies with, maybe your girlfriend is better than me. We don't catch the reference, and my father replies with, I don't get what you're talking about. My mother starts getting upset this time, as she never did. She starts talking about photos, videos, letters, and other proofs. So I start questioning my father and asking to see them. My brother totally shuts down and stops listening. My mother takes her phone to make me see those proofs. But before I can, my father confesses, but not apologizing. He tells something along the lines of, You have been seeing through my personal things. I denounce you. I felt like I was stabbed in my guts. My mother starts yelling and trying to hit my father. So I try to separate them. My mother is a tall woman, but is tiny enough for me to lift her, bring her in my room, and lock her there. I start talking to my father. I am destroyed, but I think I love him enough to forgive him. I tell him I condemn what he did, that I wouldn't even dream of being capable of that, but that I am ready to help rebuild trust and love in the family. I hear my mother bang on the door of my room, so I go to check her. She's crying desperately, so I comfort her a bit. She says something like, I wonder how long this has been going on. I realize I didn't even pose that question, I just assumed it was a one-time thing. Now my father reaches behind my room's door and starts telling me he kind of feels like it's better if he goes to my grandma's house and he's taking my brother with him. My mother is now livid in anger, her sons are the one thing she gave her life for, so she tries to open that door. My father keeps his attitude of superiority. I feel like my feelings are bursting all at the same time. I make my mother sit down, open the door lock it again behind me, and confront my father, asking how long this relationship had been going on. My father tells me it was a one-time thing, but I don't believe it, so I threaten I would erase him from my life if I discover he was telling lies. He keeps denying, so I start pushing him. I might even have spit on him, and at the end, he tells me it's been going on since I left. I am hurt, but I still feel like I could forgive him, for how abusive he was, how wrong it was what he did. I could still empathize with him, I calm down and speak to him, say to him what I think they should do next, do couples therapy, start doing things together, from everyday tasks to vacations. He seems willing to cooperate. I agree with him it's better if he leaves for a while, but insist my brother stays with me and my mother. Now, my brother is like a little child. 
he doesn't understand things with his own judgment. He thinks using prejudice. He is easily manipulated. My grandmother, while I was helping to de-escalate the fight, was manipulating my brother to come with her, knowing it would have been easy to get him to think it was all my mother's fault. That's exactly what happened. My brother thinks my father didn't do anything wrong and that me and my mother are oppressive monsters who trapped him in his inferiority complex, despite that I've always been trying to get him a social life, and my mother has always been beside him, helping with his studies, and providing him every comfort. My father wasn't even ever there. So my father, grandmother, and brother leave the house. Two hours later, the police comes to our house, called by my grandmother, who knows what for, probably out of spite. The next day I find myself wandering the house when I see my father's personal diary, a simple notebook, which he wrote his memories in. I read it all. Find his other diaries, tracing back to 2018. I am disgusted by what I read. It wasn't three months only. It was two years and seven months. Two years and seven months! Of us rebuilding a family on sand. Of my mother being verbally and psychologically abused. Of all of us suffering of deprivation of affection. All because the man who was supposed to give it to us was finding it elsewhere and was bringing just anger and resentment in the family. Not only his relationship with this woman was and still is so long, it is pervasive and for the record, expensive. My father started going on luxurious trips alone, not coming back on lunches and dinners, coming home late at night, although he always did. He didn't even come home with me at the station when I left for the university because he was with her. We just always assumed it was his way of being. Now I realize he was never there for me, or my mother, or my brother. I never really told anything personal to him. I just hadn't had a real father-son relationship with him. I loved the person I idealized him to be. I never knew the one he really was. I think we've got time for one more quick one. So let's do it. It goes by the title, My Mother Had an Emotional Affair. I'll, female 16, start off by saying that my parents, 45 male and 40 female, relationship is horrible. It had been for years. They fight a lot. The fights are mostly initiated by my mother. So, about a month ago, my mother was getting a lot of calls from an unknown number, which in start, she asked me to block as she didn't know how to. She didn't know much about phone functions. After a few days, the number was unblocked. I blocked it again. And the next day, it was unblocked again. My mother was also sleeping in separate rooms by making the excuse that your father fights a lot and she was locking the room. Also, my mother talks very loudly on the phone, but in those days, she was talking very quietly, which was weird to me. I've had a horrible gut feeling that something was wrong, so I often checked her phone to see if there were any unknown numbers. There was none. One night I checked her phone at 4 a.m. as she was sleeping. There was a call from a man called John. I'm putting fake names here and she talked to him for half an hour at 3 a.m. on WhatsApp. As I was closing the app, I stumbled upon call recorder. There it was, a call recording of her and that man. My mother doesn't know much about phone and technology, so I'm pretty sure she touched the call recorder by mistake when taking the call. She was saying, I don't think what I'm doing is wrong, but I've lost all the respect that I've earned if I did it. You'll lose nothing. They were talking about running away together and marrying as she was talking about leaving us kids. I forwarded the call recording to myself on WhatsApp and selected delete for me on her WhatsApp because I knew she wouldn't admit it. Even if I confronted her, she would have proved me crazy. So I needed the proof no matter what. Instantly, I felt like I wanted to poop and had my first panic attack in the toilet. I hurriedly messaged my online best friend, told her everything. And she asked me not to say anything to my father and just confront my mother. She told me, never say anything to your father about it. I waited, but I was getting sick. I was sweating. My heart was beating very fast. Just couldn't handle it. Woke my father up, took him to another room, instantly started crying and told him everything. Showed him the call recording. He woke my mom up, asked her about the man, about the timeline of the emotional affair. She denied at first and then admitted, mm -hmm. but by saying, I did nothing wrong. My father told her not to talk to that man ever again and asked us to never talk about this incident ever again. Next day, my father went to work and she called me names, blamed me by saying I did something to her mobile, that's why the call got recorded, threatened suicide. I told her that I didn't do anything to the call recorder and asked her to forgive me by saying that 
I wanted to confront you first, but I panicked and it felt like the words were getting out of my mouth on their own, and asked her not to do anything stupid. The next day, I told my friend all this and she said, It was the biggest F up of your life, shouldn't have told your father. And some very harsh things which hurt me a lot, so I asked her to never talk to me again, blocked her, and wished her luck. After a week, the whispering started happening again. You'd think she'd be more careful. I confronted her again, and she denied, and asked me to be quiet by saying that your sibling, male nine, is in another room and it'll affect his mental health. I asked, what about my mental health? He will not understand anything until I understand. But at least she promised me she'll never talk to that man again. I never told about this argument to my father. He still thinks that she stopped talking to a fair partner after that first confrontation. I don't know if she's still talking to that man, because I don't check her phone anymore. I've already crossed so many boundaries. I gave up. If she wants to talk, she'll talk. I can't physically stop her. Yesterday night, my parents had an argument and my mother threatened my father, saying that she'll run away, if she even has the chance. Very important thing in all this, parents can't divorce because we live in a third world country where divorce is considered taboo. My mental health has been screwed and I'm having suicidal thoughts, always had them since the age of nine, but this time they've been weighing on me. I don't know what to do. I need some support and advice. I'd appreciate it. Sorry for the mistakes and my bad English, as English is not my first language. That's a rough story. Hope everything turns out okay for the OP. Is that okay for the- Thank you for watching the Red World. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like, subscribe, and see you in the next one.